Welcome. Frequency mode. What radio should I buy as my first ham radio? To answer that question, it can be a little bit difficult. It's a little bit like saying to someone, hey, what car should I buy? Uh, well, there's lots of different models, there's lots of different makes, different pricing. I guess what <laughs> comes into your budget is probably the number one thing when it comes to a car. Maybe the same with the radio as well. This radio from Radio Oddity, the GC5, falls into the budget beginner radio category. It's a dual band radio, so you can use this on two meters and 70 centimeters. A lot of beginners like to begin on these bands because it offers them the ability to talk via repeaters. Two meters and 70 centimeter repeaters are quite popular in a lot of areas, so it gets you active and on the air really, really quickly. Now this GC5 has rather impressed me with its build quality. You can see here that it comes in this green, or sort of like camo green color. Someone actually on my Facebook page, they liken this to the old school Nokia mobile phones, and uh, I can kind of see what they're talking about there. It comes with a 1800 milliamp hour battery, that actually screws into the back of the radio using this single uh, screw, which means that it won't fall out or anything like that. Unfortunately, you can't charge the, uh, the battery by itself. It's got no USB connections on it. It's just uh, standard charging by a charging cradle that comes with the radio. The drop-in charger is one of the best that I've ever seen, and that comes with this little plastic drop-in insert. You can see it's got warning UV19. Not quite sure what that is, whether that's uh, maybe an internal product code for this radio, because I googled UV19 and couldn't find a model. But regardless, that little plastic bit clips in and then you pop the radio into the charger and it creates a very, very nice connection. And in fact, it's so good, you can turn the radio upside down and it's not gonna fall out. You've also got the two pin connector for programming. You can't program this using Chirp uh, yet. Hopefully it will become a supported model, but Radio Oddity have their own CPS software which you can use to program this radio. The antenna that comes with the radio is a flexible whip, which is very much similar to other types of radios. 136 to 174 and 400 to 520 megahertz is the frequency that's written on that. I'd recommend getting a better antenna though for this or any radio that comes with an antenna like this. They're not that good you can customize your boot screen. And you can see there that I've put my Ham Radio DX logo on, but you can basically put any logo you want and there is instructions on their website on how to do that. Welcome, frequency mode. Now the first thing that I noticed about this radio when I went into the menus by pressing the green button Menu. here, is, is that it's very, very similar to the TalkPod a36 plus uh, handheld radio which i've done a review on before and i'll put a link up into the cards if you want to have a look at that after this vi uh, video so it seems like they're going through a bit of a process at the menu. moment where they are using the same menus for all of these radios as far as the menu structure goes uh, i've had no problems with this and understanding what they are you can see squelch i don't even have to look up that menu. squelch step tx power high low and you select Power. The menu item, which is flashing high, change it to Confirm. low, and away you go. Uh, the radio also talks to you as you type in frequencies or channel um, or memory numbers. One, four, six, seven, zero, zero. And I didn't realize this um, myself, but I've received comments from uh, a few of my friends who have issues with uh, vision. And they say that the readback from these radios is very, very handy because uh, some radios don't do this uh, and it makes it a whole lot easier for them to drive the radio. I've got a few Radio Oddity radios and one of the better things about them is their manuals. They're very easy to understand and uh, very comprehensive. So the GC5 is no different in that regard too. Some of the other features of the GC5 are the large screen. As you can see, there is a, it's a large color screen. It's relatively easy to see inside. Outside is a little bit of a different story. It can be a little bit hard to see in the sunlight and also the glare if you sort of got to adjust your angle to be able to 
get a good read on it. But I guess that's just one of the things with these types of screens. Um, I, I had no issues in seeing what I was doing. It didn't completely wash out the screen. The radio has up to 999 memory channels that you can program in. You'll never program 999 channels. I give anyone a challenge to do that themselves. It also comes with FM radio as well, which uh, you can use to listen to your local broadcasts. There is also a new feature in this radio, which is kind of a bit of a weird one, and that is the stopwatch. I don't know why this is now starting to appear in these radios, but this is, I think, the second one that I've seen now. So you can turn this to on and you can bang, enable a stopwatch. I'm not quite sure why you would need this. Maybe if you're doing some sort of uh, public event or you're doing some sort of timing that you need but you can have a basic stopwatch if you live in the US which a majority of my viewers do then you can hold down the zero button and this will get you to the NOAA weather channels which are pre-programmed in so you can listen to the NOAA weather alerts on these frequencies there's all 10 that are programmed in this is what the receive audio sounds like coming out of the GC5 from one of my other radios one, two, three, four, five. Now, one of the common drawbacks or issues with these radios that I've noticed is the lack of transmit audio. It's a little bit quiet, and some radios, like the Baofeng radios, need the microphone hole even drilled out. So let's put this one to the test. VK7HH, VK7 Hotel Hotel, testing one, two, three, four, five. Audio level is pretty good. VK7HH, VK7 Hotel Hotel, testing one, two, three, four, five. And what's the uh, the audio like? And uh, coming through okay, over? So, yeah, I think it's uh, in the ballpark. Uh, clean signal and uh, pleasant to listen to. Now, the radio on two metres puts out four watts of RF power on the high setting and about 1.6 watts on the low setting. On 440, it's pretty much a similar story with 4 watts and 1.5 watts as the low power. Now, of course, to use this radio, you have to have an amateur radio license. And if you're interested in getting your license or upgrading to the next upgrade tier, then I recommend that you check out hamradioprep.com. Hamradioprep.com have a variety of courses. It's a great, easy, interactive, and fun way to learn, and uh, I'd recommend it. I'm doing my extra exam right now. If you'd like to get a discount on any of their courses, including their latest HF Masterclass course as well, you can use the code HAMDX for 20% off. These radios are dirt cheap. They're only like 25 or 30 bucks. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you wanna pick up one of these. Of course, with these budget radios, you don't get the full amount of features that you could if you went for a more advanced radio, such as this Waxon right here. If you wanna find out more about it, and trust me, you do, then there is a link that will appear here on the screen that you can follow over to a full review that I did on this radio.